Welcome everybody. It's uh, Artie from Artie's Corporate Fiction. Happy to see you guys this evening. Um, we got a an interesting show tonight. We have a very special guest who has been uh, requesting and offering um, a chance to be on the show to discuss uh, a personal issue of his, which is his own court case. Uh, this is Joshua, who goes by the moniker Broken System, Broken Trust. And tonight... He's going to uh, provide us with the audio of a recent court hearing that he had, and uh, we'll get to uh, have a discussion about it. So thank you, Joshua, and uh, welcome. Hey, appreciate you having me on. I already appreciate that very much, man. Not a problem. Not a problem. So uh, what was, uh, when When did this uh, hearing take place? This hearing took place on the 4th, so just a few days ago. So this is brand new audio. I haven't played it at all. I gave people sort of a teaser to the court date. Mm -hmm. I played maybe like a minute and a half clip. It's a 13-minute clip, uh, which I was going to ask you, um, you know, I do have paperwork from the court date where it was set up for a pre-trial. And that's mm -hmm. what I was expecting. I was expecting for a pre-trial, but mm -hmm. it turns out I've never been properly arraigned. And this mm -hmm. is my fourth time being back. So it ended up being an arraignment and not a pre-trial. So all okay. of the, all of the pre uh, trial smack that I was talking when I realized it was an arraignment, uh, then I just went back to my default, which is, you know, you basically just, challenge the validity of the charges right so okay. um you know so anyways i wanted to make that distinction before anybody you know because obviously i'm going to have a lot of trolls okay so mm -hmm. before my trolls get to saying i have no credibility which you know i saw you and and kick you guys did that one hour show and let, let me just make one thing clear man i i have nothing personal against you i have nothing personal against you know uh uh, Schrodinger's right mm -hmm. like I don't even I've never even met you guys right so it's nothing personal it's just you know I, I have a huge problem and a huge beef with some of the things that I see people calling for in what I would consider the watchdog community so um, and that is the calls to violence that's people calling for actively people getting tased right people getting tased people getting beaten and ultimately they could end up losing their life to police out on the streets and mm -hmm. I see that as being fundamentally wrong. Okay. Like, I don't care if somebody's being annoying. I don't care if somebody is. Some, uh, Josh, you muted yourself. It's happening to people. How annoying they are. Josh, you, you muted yourself. I didn't hear any of that. Okay. My bad. Uh, I had a call beeping in at, at that time. My bad, Ben. Uh, but I just, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. OK, cool, cool. But uh, as far as calling for violence, like I have. I would hope that anybody would distance themselves from somebody that calls for active violence, like people getting tased, people getting shot. Right. Because let's say, for example, I'll, I'll just use for one example, right, like this Floyd thing that mm -hmm. happened yesterday and he got tased and I saw people cheering the fact that he got tased. OK, L let's just say he was being annoying. Let's just say he was the most annoying person in the world. OK. Let's mm -hmm. just give him a default on that. And let's just set that aside for argument's sake. Right. Does that mean he deserves an instant death penalty? Uh, no, but I think uh, that's okay. something that's that Mr. Floyd seems to be asking for with the way he acts. I think it's, I wouldn't. I, I think his actions I, and mannerisms are inviting that potential uh, potentiality. But that's going to be I'm, I don't mean to go, you know, cut you off here, but that's an entirely separate yeah issue that we can yeah, have yeah, yeah yeah and i didn't mean to get lost in that either uh but yeah i i 
love it if we could come back to that as well at some point. But yeah, I'm just saying he doesn't deserve an instant death sentence. And yes, he pushes the envelope. And we talked about that a lot on my live panel earlier. So I'm not trying to excuse the behavior by any means, but we're here for a court date. Mm -hmm. So um, that being said, I don't know. When you and Kick did that show with me on it, and um, I just wanted to know real quick, Kick quickly skipped past me in court, and you you didn't get a chance to hear me in court, I believe, is what you told me, correct? I've th Whatever audio that you're going to present is the first time I've ever heard you in court. In a court of law? In okay. A, yes. Because I could just tell by your reaction, and tell me if I'm wrong, you may not even remember it, but by your reaction, you actually look slightly disappointed that you didn't get to hear the audio of me in court that, that day. And I'm just wondering why, if I was kick, why wouldn't you want to play the most uh, convincing piece of evidence that you would have? If I'm an idiot and I sound like an idiot in court, why wouldn't you want to play it for the world to see? I can't speak for kick, so right, I don't, right. you're asking a rhetorical question. So. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so maybe it's not fair. Yeah, and, I, and I'm not trying to pitch you. I understand, you know, and I don't want to, you know, get you caught up in a conflict of interest or anything like that or get you involved in a beef that I may have with somebody else. So that's not what we're here for. But I was just curious on that, man, because you look genuinely in, like you look genuinely disappointed that he skipped over me in court. But if you want, I mean, I could set, we could set this up or I could just play it. What, what do you want to do? Well, man? what you can do is we can uh, we could start it up and then. Um... At certain points, we can ask uh, ask the pause. I want to try and limit that um, as much as we can, so that you know the, the 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 video flows and we're not talking about you know the same point for thirty minutes when we've only heard like three minutes of audio. Because I personally okay. hate that when that when that happens in other videos. But right. Um. But that's something we can at least try and do, and uh, uh, we can go from there. Okay, cool. Well, I'll play it. It's the full 13 minutes. The only time you'll hear me pause it is a few seconds in just to make sure we have audio. Is that mm -hmm. cool? Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Well, here we go. This is my court date um, from just a few days ago. Again, this was scheduled for a pretrial, but as you'll quickly hear the judge, the quote unquote judge say, it actually turned out to be an arraignment. So here we go. I'll pause it a few seconds in, make sure audio is good. How is that audio already? Um, so far, so good. I'll let you know if we need to uh, raise it. Okay, cool. All right, here we go. This is the rest of the, the court date. 13 minutes. For a pre-trial. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Lisa Hamani on behalf of White Lake Township. Well, hello. Do I get my frequent punch card for visits? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Hey, did you We're eat trying, a Did you eat a good lunch? We're trying to go forward with this matter. You've been uh, again, as you know, you've been charged with uh, misdemeanor, so I need to arraign you. Well, yeah, charged with a crime. Right, a misdemeanor crime. Yeah, a crime. So we need to go forward. We need to go forward with the arraignment. Are you ready to do that? Well, yeah, I mean, this is the fourth proceeding, and we haven't got through an arraignment yet, so I'm just looking to have my well, favorite Well, I know it's because you refuse to acknowledge your rights, so I need you to acknowledge your rights. If you, if you want to do that, we can go forward with this case so you don't have to keep coming back. Well, I thought one of those rights was to be informed in the cause and nature of the charges. Well, yeah, that's what I, I want to go through that with you. Excellent. And then, and then, why you're back here again for the third or fourth time. Okay, well, I feel like so we should have to go forward with the arraignment. I'm happy to do that. Okay, and then, did, did you eat a good lunch? <laughs> All right, so, Mr. Lanto, you understand you're current for me today for arraignment. We just talked about that. The allegation is that on or about June 24th of 2021, in the township of White Lake. County of Oakland, state of Michigan, that you were driving a motor vehicle while your driver's license was either expired or canceled. That is a misdemeanor. It is punishable by conviction by a maximum of 90 days in county jail. A maximum 
and I still don't understand it. No, because everything that I've been told. What part don't you understand? What part don't you understand? Well, a lot, quite a bit of it, actually. I mean, I did the research that I was, you know, told I should do before I come back to prepare for this. And what I did is I prepared by looking up all the definitions that we have for the word drive or driver. And I looked in the Michigan state statute driver, uh, according to the state statute driver, and this is MCL 257.13, I believe it is, uh, enacted in 1949 and driver defined as driver means every person who drives or is in actual physical control of a vehicle. So the, or is a tricky word in there, but I, I just want to stick to drives. And so, Nowhere in the MCL does it define the word drive. So how can you have a driver that drives if you can't define the word drive? All right, you're arguing the case already, and we're just at the arraignment stage. Right, I'm just wondering how this got to be a crime. That's what I'm trying to get to, and then I'm trying to understand the cause of nature, because I was also that's told... Not, that's, not, that's not what an arraignment is for. We've talked about this. Well, if to you're going to argue the case... Well, I, I was also the told. Point time, you oh, know, sorry. Time to you keep interrupting me. I listen to you when you talk. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. You're going to cut you off. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. We discussed. We discussed this before, and I've explained to you that you have a right to argue your case, but I have to get past the arraignment stage before I can even get into that. I can't. I can't accept your arguments until, or at least, you're arraigned and you're properly before the court. Okay, and then. Uh, I'm sorry, I I was also told that, you know, if I wanted to hire an attorney or, you know, look into the certain terms that we had discussed at the last court date. So in order to shop around for the proper attorney, I would have to understand the cause and the nature of the charges. So that's what I'm looking to that's do. Right. I'm trying to explain I'm trying to explain to you what the charge is, but you won't accept it. Well, I was trying to get that really from Mrs. Hameme and I called her, but I failed to receive a, a return phone call from her it's the judge's job to do the arraignment judge or the magistrate so yeah my, my point was i just i didn't want to waste the court's time because i understand you have real bad guys that are out there and i understand you got to put a stop to the real bad guys i understand that right so i don't want to waste the court's time which is why i tried to contact miss amene did she it receive my phone call do understand well, I'm trying to, the more research, the more research I do, the more I, I realize, should I even be here? Well, you have to be here because you've been charged with a crime. Well, yes, and we already established at the first uh, court date, because I was taking okay. good notes. I was so taking I good notes. I like to you and explain to you, I just told you what the charge was. And well, I, I said, yeah. you understand it. Well, the, I said you understand that charge, and you said no, you don't understand it. The parts that I so comprehend, I don't, know, I don't know how else to explain it. You want to, you you understand, you understand what the charge is, but you want to fight the charges. I can't get to that point until you understand the charge. I guess what I'm then trying I'll to go through your rights. Then I'll go through your rights with you, and I'm, then we can pre-try the case. Well, I'm trying but to can't get to the pre-trial stage until we get through the arraignment. Okay, I was trying to comprehend what the charges were so I could adequately shop for an attorney. So I was trying to comprehend what I was being told, which is why I tried to reach out to Miss Ameme. Do you want to, are you going to hire an attorney to represent you? If you want to do that, I will adjourn this arraignment one more time so you can bring an attorney with you. Well, Miss Ameme, stand on your behalf. Well, I think we can maybe move through this a little faster because, I mean, this should only take a couple minutes because I have yes or no questions here. I mean, the, the first word I want, or the first question I have, I mean, Mr. Lanto, you're not the one that decides how these proceedings go. It has to go by the court rule. So I can't pre try the case until I arraign you. So once I arraign you, then I can set this for a pre trial. If you're telling me that you want to hire an attorney, that's fine. I will give you time to hire an attorney and bring you back with an attorney so that the attorney can appear on your behalf in regard to the arraignment. I'm fine with that. If that's what you just told me a few minutes ago, you want to do that. Well, I have. If not, I have to arraign you before I can set this matter for a pre trial. At the pre trial, 
that prosecutor, I'm sure that prosecutor is very good against real bad guys that are out there. I'm sure she's really good at that. But is she making... So I don't need to have the commentary. I'm just talking about your case right now. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Let me know what you want to do. Well, at this point, I'm... If you're not going to give me a response, I'm going to have to adjourn this again. Well, we had the right to fair and meaningful hearings last time. And in order to have a meaningful hearing, we get to make progress, I think. So to bring me back for the fifth time for the same thing is getting to be a little ridiculous. Okay. So, And you seem to be getting frustrated. Yes. You yes. seem to be getting but frustrated. You're refusing to acknowledge. You're refusing to acknowledge. Is it refusing to acknowledge or is it trying to understand the yes. cause and the nature of the charges? All right. Let's go back again. Okay. It is alleged that on June 24th of 2021, in the township of White Lake, County of Oakland, State of Michigan. You understand that part? I comprehend that the geographic area of where this took right. place. I comprehend that. Okay. okay. And on that date, in that place, it's alleged you were driving a motor vehicle on a highway that was open to the public with an expired or canceled license. I do not comprehend that part. What part don't you comprehend? Well, I don't comprehend because, like I said, I looked up all the definitions of the word drive and driver. I've looked up uh, Bouvier's Dictionary, Black's Law Dictionary, Michigan State. So you State don't Statute. understand the, the word drive? Is that, the, the, is that what you don't understand? Well, and then I consulted an attorney, Artie's Corporate Fiction on YouTube. The guy's a, a lawyer. So now go ahead and pause that right there. Okay. For you, Mr. Lanto. Yeah, yeah. Why would you reference me in your proceeding? I was just, like I said, I was, I was expecting and anticipating a pretrial because that's what was on the, the, uh, the paperwork I got from the court, right? That's what I was expecting. And then they turned it back to an arraignment. So I made the choice, the, the, the choice on the spot and on the fly. I'm just going to turn it into a kangaroo court. So you're admitting that you were attempting to frustrate the process. I mean, this, this process is frustrating for everybody because we all know the bottom line here is that it's extortion. The bottom line is it's fucking extortion. That's what it is. Okay. So, all right, with that out of the way, again, so basically you really weren't referencing me with an actual seriousness. You were just doing it to throw it out for viewers that you're just going to reference. Well, I knew this. I, to you. I, knew I, was, I knew I was going to be publishing this. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so this is kind of playing for your crowd right here, Artie, which is why I kind of was happy that you accepted the invite and not, you know, the other guy that I made the offer. Well, uh, well, one of the main reasons I accepted it was because of this part of the preview that you offered that I listened <laughs> to where you All mentioned right. me by not by real name, but by name. And yeah, and listen, and, and comments and, that saying that words, you know, change their meaning over can change their meaning over time. Um, yes. And then even though, okay, I still stand by that, don't get me wrong, but I don't even know why okay. that was even an applicable comment in the first place to what the well, judge was it, saying. It, well, it wasn't. I was just in there trying, like I said, I'm, I'm turning this into a kangaroo court at this point because they're not willing to proceed forward. They won't stick to their own rules. They won't stick to their own words. So what other choice do I have? I know it's extortion. All they want is money. And every time I go in there and I play dumb, they think I'm just going to give them money and leave. Well, I think you're playing dumb now. Well, I mean, I, I, think, listen. Yeah, I think, you know, I think, you know, exactly what you're doing. Um, and you trying to say that you don't understand or you don't comprehend, I think yet you are being dishonest to the judge. Well, here's the thing, but I'm not being dishonest because I genuinely want to know what the word drive, because I genuinely looked up the word drive, you right. know, according to the Michigan state statutes. Right. And then we, I mean, we both know that you have in Black's Law and in Bouvier's dictionary, or maybe I'm, uh, incorrect here, but just in Black's Law, you have operator, driver and traveler, right? Uh, so those are the three terms in legal di dictionaries, right? Uh -huh. So an operator is somebody that owns a business, like a tow truck company, right? You or, may not be behind the wheel. Be, or, or, or an operator could be someone that you dial zero to. Oh, right, right, right. Exactly. Or I could say, hey, I drive my girlfriend nuts, right? Am I driving without a license? And then, I mean, and I'm not yeah. trying to get silly, okay? I'm not, I'm and, not really well, trying to get and this And I silly. updated my drivers yesterday on my computer. Am I talking about driving a car of course not right right and so, and of so course you this goes into so if you understand that words have multiple meanings 
why are you trying to make why are you what are you trying to accomplish here with the judge well like i said i was anticipating it being a pre-trial so everything i had prepared for a pre-trial i threw out the window because i realized we're back at the arraignment so you know let, let me just say this to anybody who's thinking about doing this or speaking for themselves in a court of law the one thing you have to take into account here is the closer to the arraignment phase you can stay, the safer you are. Okay, so my Which point is, is I want to walk practice for a lot of these uh, arguments that people put forth. Okay, so you know, I mean, I could walk you down the the road of logic to quickly dispel and quickly expose the lie that is this kangaroo court. If you would like me to, if you, if you'd like me to, we could do that. Or would you like me to finish playing the rest of the recording? Um, hold your thought on that. We can, we could definitely okay. talk about that, but let's, let's continue okay. on. I just wanted to stop because I knew that would get people's attention when you m drop my name. Re reference you. Yeah. Party. Yeah. And, and listen, man, and I, I, I have the most respect for anybody in the watchdog community I have for you. Okay. So let me just point that out and get that off, uh, you know, on the record right now. And I appreciate you bringing me on the show. I really do, man. And, um, you know, I also saw that you did that thing on uh, Penguin and, you know, your imitation of that, man. So I just want to say that real quick. Um, but I I'm not trying to make a circus out of this stuff. It's a circus on its own. OK, it's a circus on its own. I'm just pointing out that it's a circus. So with that being said, uh, unless, you know, you, you got anything else to add, I, I can play this again. No, we can play. Okay. All right, cool. How, well, how much time do we have left? Uh, we have we're at the nine minute mark right now, and it's a 13 minute audio so what's that four minutes yeah, uh okay. just under four minutes maybe? that's fine okay here we go all right we'll resume this now drive uh correct i do not understand the word drive because this guy already on youtube said that um the words change meaning over time is that true driving in this particular instance means that you were in a motor vehicle a motorized vehicle you were operating that vehicle on a road that was open to, to the public well and then it says here in and that Michigan. vehicle was motorized. Right, so and then assuming like right. you're in a car, let's see, a GMC 2014 GMC train. Well, I'm gonna that I'm, was. I'm gonna concede that there was a mode of conveyance at some point, right? But my 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 okay, point under were you were you operating it? Were you were well, you in the driver's seat? I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be compelled to be a witness against myself because it appears like I'm being prosecuted. I'm just saying, do you understand that when you're in a motor vehicle no. and you're sitting in the and let me finish my sentence. Uh -huh. and you're sitting in that motor vehicle and the key is, is on and you're operating that motor vehicle and you're operating it while you're on a highway or a uh, motorway or a road that's open to the public that's considered driving for legal purposes well we just it. we just that's what that word means right we do you just you understand what i just said i don't comprehend it because here's the here's what i don't comprehend it. Ask you that. i said you understand that. no i i do not understand what because don't you, you understand about that word you use the word operate and then you use the word drive an operator and driver are two totally different things in black saw addiction they're the same thing for purposes of the arraignment for purposes of this arraignment so which definitions are we going by because i consulted with a lawyer a lawyer who said that the driving who said that these words change meaning over time. Is that correct? I have to say, I don't really appreciate you trying to use my words, um, even if you're using it in levity. I don't, uh, to say that you consulted with an attorney. I did not consult with you. We had a, we had a internet discussion and a few comments exchanged. So, okay. I know you didn't use my real name, but I don't really appreciate that, but I'm just going to let it go since, again, you didn't use my real name. Okay, well, and again, I knew I was going to be publishing this in the first place. This is, you know, and I'm not saying that's an excuse. I'm just saying, you know, like, you got to understand that this is all theater. We're all actors on a stage. And this is just me on the stage at this point. So mm -hmm. um, it gets to be fun at sometimes because when you're in these court proceedings, right, when you learn to recognize the jabs and the incriminating questions, you can just fucking move out of the way. And you can just be like, uh, if you didn't notice, I asked her, well, I'm not going to incriminate myself. Are you kidding me? Like I'm, I'm in this court right now. You expect me to come in here and fucking incriminate myself? Well, you got to be she like was asking don't... whether or not you understood the meaning of a word. That's not incrimination. Well, and I mean, if we're going by Merriam-Webster's definition of the word, yeah, I understand that. I understand Merriam-Webster's, and I for like up until four years ago, I had no idea. Okay, 
uh, let me ask you this, Arnie. You're an attorney, okay? Mm -hmm. The words may, must, and shall, okay? Explain to the crowd, please, what the difference between may, must, and shall are. No, I'm not going to do that, man. Come on. Okay, I can do it. I can do it for the crowd, okay? okay? The word may means optional. The word shall means optional. The word must is the only thing in contractual language that actually means that you must do something. So on this, uh, on this paperwork I get from the court, you can quickly dissect it and you can quickly easily tell. Like in number four, when it says failure to appear is a, in a criminal charge or in a criminal case may subject you to the penalty for contempt. May. There's yeah. that word may. Why doesn't, why doesn't it say uh, uh, you must appear? Why does it say may? Well, instead says, of months. well, it says you may be subject to contempt, right? Right, as an option. So, so another, no, so it's not optional for you to not appear. It's optional for the judge to hold you in contempt. I call bullshit. Why? I call bullshit. But, that, I but call that's bullshit. where, the, but that's where the may is located. That's the that that's what where may is affecting. If anybody doesn't know and they don't follow the legal realm, these words have meaning. And these words oftentimes have double meaning, and that's why you have legalese. And that's what pisses me off is because I look at this like the intellectually uh, like intellectual bullies. I look uh -huh. at this as the same thing as intellectual bullies, people that fucking throw their weight around and they take advantage of people that aren't smart enough to understand the difference. I was one of those fucking idiots four years ago. I didn't know any of this four years ago. You look up the word shale in legalese. What does shale mean uh, in Black's Law Dictionary? We could go look well, it up right now if you want. Well, if you want. well I do. Well, I have it right. Well, I actually have Black's Law Dictionary, but I also have, uh, you know, you know, uh, Michigan um, defines shall and may, correct? Uh, no, I don't know Michigan's. I haven't looked that up. And uh, like Michigan, I said, Michigan uh, MCLS 257.82 within the vehicle code, mind you, the, the vehicle portion. Shall and may means shall is mandatory and may is permissive. Okay, so there we go again. So the words have different meanings depending on where you look for the definitions. And well, people well, think, I mean, if people you're, going, think to, if you're all... going to look up driver, which you admitted to the judge, I feel yeah, like yeah. if you want to talk about the legal lease thing, you should also be, be more cognizant of the other definitions that are in the code so that you understand what's going on and what the terms are going to be meaning to you. Well, again, so, I bring this back to the fact that I know I did nothing wrong. I know I did nothing wrong. What were you doing? I know I have not. You didn't have a license and, they, and you got caught. Okay, so big deal. My fucking fiance doesn't have a license. She's a good driver. Why does hey. she have to go get a license? Uh, because that be, and don't use the logical fallacy because that's what everybody else does. Because that's what the law says. That's, that's what the law, what the law says. The quote unquote law, right? The quote unquote law. Yep. The, the, okay, the law, so, and that's what you're going to uh, stand the by. The law passed if, if, by the legislature. And signed by the governor. I mean, you already went through this in Paul's chat. I can I, I can replay you what was said in Paul's chat. And I'm not trying to do that here. I'm just trying to play the court hearing for you. That we can get lost in that on that tangent if you want. Okay, but uh, I'm not trying right. to get we, lost. We, but uh, but I do want to make sure make a note that I know you. The uh, only reason I made up I went I referenced the uh, the the, the shall and make because uh, that's something that you seem very passionate yeah, yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. I but get I did you. want I to note that. Michigan actually does, in fact, define shall and may. So yeah, and then and the more yeah, the more I look into this stuff, and you know, I'm just gonna go back to kind of one of the things I saw when you and Kick made the show about me, right? When when I said, "Hey, I'm not a legal expert. I have no law degree." You gave a nod in there, like, "Okay, wait, hey, at least this guy is being honest, right?" Right. So, and the fact is, I'm I'm trying to be as truthful as I possibly can be, and this YouTube journey that I'm on is helping me throughout that process right i'm trying to be as truthful in my speech and my actions as possible oftentimes i'll go back and i'll catch a contradiction of my own right it helps me i think in my opinion be a better person and be a better dad right to my kids and by the way kick whatever you say about my fucking family dude you have no fucking clue what is going on in my family my kid comes in and reads the chat practically every day on my live streams dude so i haven't lost my family i haven't lost my kids whatever ridiculous stupid claims you make if somebody points out something to me that i said that was incorrect I, I don't care how what feelings I have. If it was correct or incorrect, that's what I care about, right? So am I correct or am I incorrect? If I go looking up all these definitions, which people in your chat right now are probably thinking, oh, this is so silly. Oh, my God, these guys. Oh, oh this idiot is just talking about these words. What do you think the law is? 
the law is a convoluted system that's been made almost impossible to fucking understand because you have dual meanings to everything, right? So it's like, well, it's I, all I become a shit show. You, could, you can argue that uh, some uh, parts of the law and some words in the law have um, altered meanings from their normal everyday usage, but the law is more than just word definitions. The law is analysis in context. Okay. Okay, so I'm glad facts, you brought that up. And applying facts to uh, to the law. Okay, and I'm glad you brought that up because this is a much more meaningful conversation that I had on Schrodinger's because they were just instantly, they didn't know me from Adam. They didn't know me uh, whatsoever. They bring me on there and then they're thinking, oh, you know, we're just going to tell this guy he's wrong. He's an idiot. He's stupid, right? And it's like, I have recordings with attorneys that agree to the definitions that I'm throwing out there. So they're, they're not discrediting my words. They're discrediting attorneys that I've consulted mm-hmm. words, right? So it's like, you don't know where the sources of this information are coming from. You could quickly and easily clarify them. But instead of asking me for clarification, you just automatically throw me in. And know, oh, you're a stupid idiot. Oh, you're just one of those frauditors. Right. And it's like, I, Kick even said, like, I'm a sovereign citizen, posse comitata. You know, I had no fucking clue what a posse comitata is. I had no clue what Moorish nationals were. Well, I think, so, uh, well, and then I, he's gonna, well, Joshua, I feel like a lot of people who try to engage in your tactics in the court like you did in the video in the audio a lot of them don't know the origins of where those legal questions or those questions came from Um, okay so perfect now we're having a logical conversation so now we're not just throwing out name call right so it's like that's ultimately what i would prefer to do here right that's ultimately what i would prefer because i i operate under the uh you know you know, respect begets respect. So I'm not going to um, disparage somebody if we're having a, you know, a friendly conversation. That's not really what happened on Monday. And that's why I, I, you know, you know, clap back at, you know, Ricky and uh, David, but you know, yeah. so far we're having a, a relatively um, re- uh, reasonable conversation here. So I think so too. And I would agree. And I can be perfectly respectful to somebody that's respectful to me. I can, I can troll right back with somebody that's going to troll me, right? So I give back what I get. And that's that also ties into the cop watching that I do in the channel that I have. If you pay attention to any videos, and trust me, you know, the narcissist in me, the little narcissist that's, you know, the, that might turn into a monster, right? I watch the videos and I pay attention. Never once do I start out as the asshole to somebody. They always are the asshole first to me. And then that's exactly what they get in return. So I think that's only fair. You know, somebody is going to be an asshole to me and threaten me. I'm going to come right back at you and I'm going to fucking be an asshole. And I'm going to, I'm not going to take kindly to the threats. Okay. Uh, that's fair. So, um, all right. And let's, yeah, I think I, yeah. Let's, so, let's you know, I mean, the that, rest of the, uh, the video, uh, the audio then, and then we okay, can, cool, we can get into the meat and potatoes. Cool. Cool. Okay. Here, here we go. And it's at the 11 minute mark. We got two minutes left guys. Making a decision right now of what it means in this particular hearing for this particular purpose. Yeah, I don't want you getting frustrated at me. Driving means that you were on a road open to the public in a car, sitting in the operator's seat. Operator, again, you know, somebody that owns mean, a business. I don't own a business. Were, and, you were, and you were operating that motor vehicle while you were going down the highway. That's what it means. And I wasn't what on a. You understand I wasn't that? on. I wasn't on a highway, and I wasn't operating. I'm not arguing about what you were or weren't doing. I'm just saying that's what it means. At some point, we have to agree to what these definitions mean because I don't believe I committed a crime. All right. Thank you. I'm going to adjourn this matter to a new day. So we're not making any progress. I don't want you getting frustrated either, because I don't want to be locked in a cage. I just want to have my freedom. Your bond will continue at two hundred dollars personal recognizance. Okay. And then the last time we were here, I'm going to make a I'm going to make a note that you indicated that was your intent to hire an attorney. Well, it's my intent to consult with an attorney. Maybe not hire an attorney, because that might contribute to bear tree. So, Mr. Langell, we'll send a new thing out to you. We'll see you then. So, we're adjourning this again? Yes, we are. Okay, well, we'll see you, I guess, next time. Thank you. Thank you. So, that that was pretty much it. So, um, Baratree? Really? Baratree. 
I I know it's an ancient word, isn't uh-huh. it? Do you want to explain for the crowd what bear tree is? Because I had to look it up myself when I first heard it. If I recall, it's old school definition rever- uh, regarding was regarding pirate uh, piracy, but I can't recall uh, yeah, the it, definition off the top of my head. Yeah, that's where it stems from. Bear tree is basically lawyers making money off frivolous uh, claims or frivolous mm-hmm. lawsuits, right? For example, you know, this case right here where I've caused no loss, injury, or harm, and then I get it. Okay, so we're gonna let let's not straw man any arguments. Let's mm-hmm. just make the most powerful argument you can to the reason why somebody has to have a license, even if they're quote unquote traveling, right? Mm-hmm. So the insurance thing is always the one that comes up. Well, what if you hurt somebody, right? Okay, so if you own a gun, are we, how are we going to minority report all the policing? Are we going to go through all the things that could happen in life to prevent them from happening, right? And I think. The whole insurance thing has been a clever way to uh, sell the illusion to the public. This is about public safety. But do you know how many judges have a portion of their retirement tied into how much money they can generate while they're on the bench? There's a lot of them. There's quite a bit of them. And so I don't have any details as far as like statistics, but I guarantee you look into it. You will see that. So, okay. So so you're making a claim and you're asking us to verify your own claim. No, no, no. I'm not trying to make any claims because I don't know them to be true. What I'm saying is... But you, I'm, oh, okay. but you just threw it out there. Okay, okay. You maybe, said that judges, that judges make money off of, depending on how much some, they... Uh, some judges. Some judges directly are directly financed or are directly uh, a profit off of traffic convictions. Of course they do. Of so course that, they do. What do you okay. consider their salary? You, well, you say, of course they do, but then you ask me to, you say uh, you don't have any statistics, but and you tell us to go look it up ourselves. Well, I'm saying, okay, so you take their salary and you combine that with incentives that they might have. And I'll give you one example of a local judge that we had here in the Michigan area, which I'm in Michigan. I think you asked me that earlier and I didn't have a chance to answer that, I think. But there was a judge that we had in my local area that his wife was directly tied into a drug testing facility, right? So anybody that came before this judge, he would specifically sentence them. Instead of saying you've got to complete drug testing and then say, here's your choices on drug testing facilities, he would make the mistake and strictly name the one uh, drug testing agency that his wife had direct ties to. So he he made incentives. So like I said, it's a tricky and, and... Was he found out? Yeah, yeah, he was found out, and there was a lawyer that recorded him secretly in his cha- chambers, and his name was so Judge McKenzie. So he was McKenzie. doing something wrong. Correct. Okay, so, but you seem to make it think like judges are doing this, and it's sanctioned. Well, are they doing it because they're moral and righteous people, or are they getting a sailor? Uh, you're going to have to ask the judge about that. Well, I can almost guarantee you they get a salary. Am I doing it because well, I make money? Gets, on it? Well, I mean, yes, everybody's going to need a. Everybody got needs to put food on the table. So okay, and so and I'm going in there and I'm risking my freedom and I'm risking uh, uh, basically uh, being locked in a cage for three months uh, for what? For how much money am I making off this? Uh, who's making making money off of what? So. Again, you, got again, a judge you, again that, you are saying, again, you gave me an example of a judge who was doing something that you admit was actually not lawful, that he got in trouble for that. So, but then you still say that judges are incentivized to convict people because they would directly profit from it. I, it's a combination of both. So let's make that distinction. Okay. Let's make sure so I'm very careful. What is, with, what, with how I what are they permitted to do in which they're able to profit off of? Uh, convictions, uh, and I mean, please... you would have to look into you would have to look into each judge to find out the answer for that. And I don't know it off the top of my head. I don't have any statistics on it. I did see uh, information on how a judge was getting a profit, or it was a portion of their retirement, uh, as far as how much money they could generate. So, um, and I believe, uh, you know, I don't remember where I saw the source, so I'm going to stay away from making the claim that that's true. I don't know if it's true. But if that, but you have to imagine that is that is how these systems become corrupt, correct? Uh, I'm not denying the existence of, of corruption, uh, but I am den- okay. I am going to be speculative of any uh, system where you where you are making the charge that a judge is directly incentivized to uh, impose fines on people. 
Well, do you think they're going to make it public if they get kickbacks or if they get if they have backroom deals? Do you think that they're going to want that information getting out? I mean, I saw a report by this Susan Bassey, right, in California, and she's exposing judges right now, privatized judges. And they basically earn, I think it's like $8,000 a day or something like that. I mean, she's an investigative reporter on YouTube, right? So this lady does serious stuff. I'd have to go uh, double check the video. But she's on she's hot on the trail of a bunch of corrupt judges in California. So yes, this does happen. I'm not, you know, coming out here with these uh, wild claims that, but, you know, well, this is I, it, like... Uh, with all due respect, I think you are, because, again, you're asking us, again, to go look it up ourselves and go verify well, you can for watch, you, you, can, you can listen, you can watch Susan Bassey and you can decide for yourself. How about that? So um, just like I was referencing you and I know, you know, you said, you know, I guess... You were a little bit annoyed at that, and I get it, but I, I was trying to make a deeper point here, Artie. The, so the, the deeper point deeper I was point? trying to, the deeper point to that is, you know, just because you're a lawyer and you're on YouTube, does that mean I shouldn't listen to you, or does that mean you you you, you don't have actual uh, knowledge that you can pass along to people just because you're on YouTube? Uh, I would say, even though I'm an attorney, I would all absolutely ask you to kind of verify what I'm saying. Right, right, right. But what I'm saying is people instantly try to discredit somebody because they're on YouTube. But well, nobody uh, discredits... Often, well, oftentimes, well, let me put it this way. Yes, there's going to be that situation, but I uh, have my, you know, background and my education to, to help uh, grant me a little bit more credibility than a crank or somebody on agree. YouTube without any sort of education, uh, legal education... And right, I would agree, claims. which is why, yeah. Okay, so then that's that's uh, going back to the distinction that I try to make. I tell people I am not a lawyer. Okay. I have no, uh, I've never been to law school. And then you are a lawyer and you're licensed, right? So mm -hmm. that should tell you instantly right there that, yes, you can get credible information on YouTube uh, because there are licensed attorneys that put out educational videos on YouTube. So I guess what I'm trying to say is it depends on what source you're going for and it depends on what information you're looking up as but to I, far as, I, the, I, as, far as say, the credibility. But I would say the very a big distinction that I would say between uh, somebody like Mark Stevens over somebody like myself is that when I give my information or if I make a point and provide information to an audience, um, I go in with the, dis with, the understand with the disclaimer that I'm not giving legal advice um and oh, yeah. that everything to be and also i'm also not selling people something either um and i don't have, have an incentive somebody? i'm not talking about you i'm talking about okay. you um you know the the gurus of this ideology such as mark stevens uh uh carl lentz david Strait, etc who sell okay. uh scripts fi filings and that right there is legal advice because they're giving you forms and paperwork to fill out and they're directly advising you on what you should, should say do and write when you're speaking um in a court of law yeah yeah and i would i i think we both are in agreement we need to make that distinction that you know you are completely different from that sort of that sort of group and I'm not saying to anybody that they should follow those guys and be like, hey, you know, just follow that script and bam, you'll be fine, right? I don't try to sell that by any means, right? I just say, I've just learned enough from various sources. And yes, there's a portion of Mark Stevens' script, if you can hear it, in what I use when I'm uh, in court. There is a portion evident. of that yes. script. Right, 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 right. So I don't hide that and I don't deny that, right? So... But there's other adaptations that you have to use. You can't just go in there with one little script and be like, hey, I'm going to read this thing, uh, you know, uh, blah, 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 blah. Here we go. And then automatically you're just off the hook of anything you may have done wrong. Right. So mm -hmm. but I know I'm not a wrongdoer. I know I've done nothing wrong. I know I have done not a damn thing wrong. And when I well, when you I, say, you, OK, well, now we, we can actually talk about the, the very specific circumstances of what's why we're here. Right. OK, so you say that you know you don't think you did anything wrong which was you know operate, i know i didn't do anything you know, drive your car without a license i know i didn't do anything wrong. okay well according to you i know i i know right from wrong i have i know right from wrong and i teach my kids right from wrong all the time and i know i didn't do anything wrong 
why would you say what you did wasn't wrong despite the charges against you? Okay, because just because you have charges against you doesn't mean you did doesn't mean you're the wrong. Dude, okay, I have. But, a no, no, I'm, not, I'm, I'm saying charges are levied against you. I'm not saying you actually committed the crime, but you are you are yeah. rejecting the entire premise behind the charges in the first place. Well, and let's go back to this whole thing with the ideology and the subset stuff. I, you, you, you realize I always said I'm not a subset, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and I don't identify as a subset with that ideology, right? Mm -hmm. So I've said that I've made that distinction. So, cause I see the chat going crazy with trolls and like the subset shit. Right. And I, listen, I know the game. I know what you're up to. You're just trying to discredit somebody by placing them in a group and labeling them in that group so you can just discredit them. So you guys can shut the fuck up in the chat about being a South Sit. I do not identify as a South Sit, and I'm not a South Sit. Well, neither does you Mark may Stevens, hear some... but... Well, I mean, okay, so Mark Stevens is a South Sit. Well, okay, he's an anarchist, a self-proclaimed anarchist, okay. but the problem okay. is, is... I am not an makes, anarchist. He makes a lot of the same jurisdictional arguments that a lot of other sovereign citizens make. So, so I can see where people in. might tie me into the ideology, but that doesn't make me all part of that group. Okay. So let's make that clear distinction because that really pisses me off when people do that. And nothing makes me want to disengage faster than when pe people are like, oh, you're a sob sit. Do you realize that's a domestic terrorist group that uh, the, the government will yeah. place you in? Right. So am I a domestic terrorist? Uh, no, but the ideology okay. is, is founded upon it. Right. But now you see the distinction and why the words are so important and why the words can be used in actual, you know, uh, real life situations to place you in a terrorist group. That's why I don't take kindly to that. So, again, going back to the ideology, right, man? Uh -huh. Let's just dispel that. And auditing, I've gone out and done a few audits, but I am not an auditor. I am a self-proclaimed First Amendment champion. and I stand up for free speech. That's what I do. And if I do some audits in the process, I am a professional cop watcher. So if anybody wants to attach me to a label or a group, I identify as a cop That's your job? So uh, I didn't say it was my job. I said that's what I identify as. Well, you, if said you, guys want... you said professional cop watcher. So I was wondering. Well, professional that's... cop watcher. Yeah. Does it pay the bills yet? No. Will it pay the bills? I don't know. Let's see. I see. You know, I mean, there's a cameraman that got paid when he, uh, when he was hired by cops or live PD, right? What's, why is it any different if I'm out there? I think there's probably a bit of a difference in motivations behind the uh, the videotaping, but okay, we're there. there. Okay, I mean we don't have to drift off. That might be a topic if you want to come I, back. I still want to hear uh, your ideology again. Okay. Again, you we're talking about okay. your charges, your current charges. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Okay, so so I make the point, and I tried to make this point to you, and I probably did a shitty job at making this point in the chat. Is if I'm moving my vehicle on my private road, is that uh -huh. a crime? In the eyes yes of no. the law in the state of Michigan, yes, it's crime. If I'm moving my vehicle on my private road. On your private road, um, I don't believe so because you're not on a public road. You're no longer on okay, a public so, road. Okay, so if I commit murder on my private road, that is still a crime, correct? Uh, yes. Okay, so the easiest way to tell a man-made flawed law from an actual law is it doesn't matter geographic area where you do it. It's still wrong, and you're still a wrongdoer, and you're still going to face consequences. That's the difference between the, universal law and uh, statutory the, law. Well, That's where statutory law is flawed. But the, addition, but the ability to use the public highways is a privilege, and therefore that's why it Bullshit. requires a license. Bullshit. That's the illusion that's been sold to the people, and we both know it. No, it's not. It's bullshit. And you. That's okay. that's what that's the whole point of a driver's license, because using okay, the public now, roads is not a is a privilege, not a right, or at least operating and already, a and, and, Yeah, and and I've had tremendous amount of respect for you from what I've you know uh, experienced so far on your show, and I appreciate that. So before things, it, it, just in case, just so things don't devolve into a childish conversation, if we need to disagree on something and say we, we couldn't be further apart, I'm fine with that, setting it aside and moving on. Because okay. I'm not going to, you know, name call. I'm not going to tell you you're such a fucking idiot for thinking that, right? But okay. we are we are so far apart on that issue, it's not even funny, right? Cool. Because, okay. and, I'll, and I'll explain with simple logic why that doesn't make sense. Okay. You pay taxes, or most people pay taxes, right? I've paid taxes my whole entire working life, right? Those taxes pay for the roads. 
You mean to tell me that you need permission to use the roads that you've already paid for. Now, it makes sense why in a commercial application, you would have to pay for a license and pay extra taxes because you are now adding extra wear and tear on the people's roads. It makes perfect sense why you have to have a license for that. It doesn't uh, make sense that you have to have a license to use the roads that you've already paid for. Now, the governments have issued licenses, and yes, it's, it's been somewhat helpful, right? Like, let's say you have somebody that has 40 DUIs. They've been given due process law. They followed the system their whole life. Now they've established that they shouldn't be behind the wheel of a car, right? That's very true. In my case, that's not the case. My case, my license expired uh, during COVID. The buildings were closed down, and I didn't have an opportunity to go renew it. And then after that, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just traveling on my roads. I'm not using it for work or adding extra wear and tear to these roads. And I know I'm not doing anything wrong. So the only argument you can come back with at that point is the insurance, right? Like, okay, what if you cause an accident? And I'm glad when people bring that up because then it brings me to my next point. I got into a fender bender accident maybe three years ago, right? The only accident I've been involved in like 25 years, right? So I get into a fender bender accident. Uh, the state comes in, the cops show up because that's a requirement in Michigan is that the police come and they fill out a report, right? So the person I hit and dented their bumper, right? They get $0, their insurance, they, they had no insurance on their vehicle. We live in a no fault state. So that means mm -hmm. your insurance covers you. My insurance covers me, right? So they get nothing. And I did the fender bender accident, bumped into them, damaged their bumper. The state comes in, the cops come in, and they go, hey, you got into an accident. You have to pay the state $350. So the third party comes in, takes the $350. They don't give it to the person and say, here, fix your bumper. They, they keep the money for themselves. So tell me again how insurance is the reason why you should have to have a license. Wait, so you actually caused the accident? Correct. And, now you're, I, and you're bitching that you're paying the consequences for it. No, I'm bitching that. No, I'm not bitching that I had to pay the state. What I'm saying is if I'm going to pay, it was $350. If I'm going to pay $350, why not pay it to the person that I hit? Why does the state as the third party come in and say, oh, hey, $350. We'll keep this. You still have your damage bumper and you're still an asshole for fucking running into them. Would you have been paying that $350 if you had insurance? Uh, yes. Because you have a $500 deductible for it. I mean, I, yes and no. It depends on what insurance you have and what your deductible is. So I should say that. Okay. But why does the third party get to come in and keep the 350 bucks? That person could have repaired that bu uh, their, their bumper with that 350 bucks. You're going to have to talk to Michigan yeah. because that's not how New Jersey works. Okay. Okay. So now we're back. Okay. So now we're back at many different ways to skin a cat, which is the insurance, right? Uh-huh. Just because... Just because insurance come, gets involved or there's possible damage that could be out there doesn't give the state to license and make it make everybody required to do something. That's not how that's supposed to work. But that's ultimately how it is supposed to work because not in my we're, state. We have a no fault state. Well, no, no. Well, I, well we're talking. We're, oh, we're still talking about insurance. My bad. Uh, okay, so but that's where that lot. That's where that logical fallacy exposes itself right there. Is because. Now it's an insurance thing. It's like, okay, maybe we should have different insurance laws. Maybe it's not the fact that licensing or not licensing, right? Like I just said, I know my fiance is a great driver. She's never had a license day in her life. If I know she's a great driver, why should she have to go get a license? Um, because again, that's the uh, what the Michigan voters decided upon. The Michigan voters. So yeah. again, we could bring this back to, okay, so if there's two people left in the world, why does one person get to impose their will over the other person? So it doesn't matter how you um, know large of a scale you scale it up to. It doesn't matter if it's 51% or 60 So it's basically a, a mob rule. Like 51% well, of the people say so, so, it, so it's so. Well, That's a logical fallacy. You know, welcome to uh, uh, representative democracy, democracy. right? Uh, Welcome to democracy. Okay, yeah, so uh, yep, yeah, it's the uh, the worst form of government, except for all the rest. Winston Churchill. Well, okay, you know, and you may have a point there. So, like I said, we can, I can agree to disagree with you already, and I'm, I, I like I said, I'm not going to lose respect for you at all. But okay. we couldn't be further apart on those two issues for the simple fact that we can bring it back to murder, rape, uh, theft. It doesn't matter where you do where those crimes happen; they're mm -hmm. still crimes. It doesn't matter if I do it on my private road. If I steal from somebody that's on my private road, I stole from them. I'm still uh -huh. facing consequences, 
right? But, the, but, I'm, the, but again, we're talking about the public roads, right? And the reason so why they talk everything. about the public roads is because it's not just a matter of uh, the um, the wear and tear. Because you know, it's more than just it's not just the general revenue, at least certainly not. I think in most states, it's the gasoline tax that pays for most of the road uh, the road usage. Um, so the problem that we're having here is back in the early days when the motor vehicles were uh, early early days, early days of the 20th century, um, when motor vehicles were you know around but not fully uh, fully mainstream. There were constant issues of these uh, owners of these automobiles that were getting into accidents and were getting into themselves into trouble. And mm -hmm. ultimately, the states said these guys need to be reined in because they keep on recklessly using the roads because at the time, even, even for the old cars at the time, they were being able to drive faster than horses and get themselves uh, in accidents and injuries against regular people and again at the time they didn't have any sort of um testing or or matter of education on how to operate these things so yeah. the leg so the state back then through the legislature believed it in their in their you know in their infinite wisdom saying you know what we need to actually provide a method of licensure to ensure that people who are going to get behind the wheel of a car know what they're doing so everybody that gets behind the wheel of a car knows what they're doing because they have the license? Oh, hell no. Then you would expect no... Right, right, right. So that instantly... So see, we can use simple logic to just dispel... All, I would agree with you that insurance is the reason and nobody... The state doesn't want to bear the cost of uh, so, people... So let, me, well, let, me, let me ask for clarification. Let me ask for clarification. Okay. okay. It, let's, let's, uh, let's say for the, the sake of argument that they got rid of licensing. Like it's not mm -hmm. actually doing anything in terms of, uh, um, you know, pass, you know, safety. Um, and, you know, ultimately it's just, you know, uh, you know, revenue for the government. Um, mm -hmm. Does that should we also get rid of all, you know, traffic laws like rules of the road, running red lights and so on? I. I, I don't know the answer to that one. I mean, I'm I mean, not going to pretend if I run a, if I run a red light and nobody's harmed, what's the issue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, and we're drifting into the area of the gray areas of law, right? There was well, potential well, to cause I mean, harm, well, right? well, I think a lot of what your, where your ideology was going into is that there needs to be some sort of injury or damages against somebody for there to be an actual law that's broken, right? Well, I mean, this is the gray areas of law, and there's no one simple answer to any of this. And this is why I find law fascinating. This is why I love talking about law, is because, you know, there's no one-size-fits-all approach, but what I try to avoid is sticking it into a box. Like here's the, here's what we've always done. So here's what we always have to do. Right. Like that's just that, that is not logical. And it basically makes so that you don't have any progress towards anything. So I would agree with you. I have a cop watch video that I did where I asked the cop, I said, Hey, you know, what was the reason for you telling this guy's vehicle or what's the reason for the stop? Right. He was just sitting there doing nothing. And he said, well, he, doesn't have a license and he ran a red light. I said, okay, well, the red light, you got something there. You could have put the public in danger, right? So I understand that, right? Those are the gray areas of law where, sure, you didn't cause a victim, but it could have caused a victim, right? That's the gray areas of law. So in my opinion, and my belief is you have to err on the side of freedom. You have to err on the side of freedom. Something could have happened, but it didn't. And if you want a quick example of maybe why we could we could get lost on this subject for one simple reason i'll just say this real quickly like on a dui right mm. imagine two guys leave a bar for uh and they're both driving drunk right mm -hmm. one guy smashes into a tree and he walks away from the crash just fine then goes home right another guy plows into a van and kills a family of five right mm -hmm. both of them had the same intent uh, the dui is uh, the only crime that i know of where intent is not factored into the crime Oh, there, so, are, there are strict liability crimes all over the place. What are you talking about? But what I'm saying is the intent doesn't play a fact. Both of them had the same intent. They both intended to get in their vehicle and drive home and get home safely, right? That was the intent of both of them. Who's going to get punished more? The guy who smacks into the tree or the guy that smacks into the minivan of four people? Uh, We know the answer to that. Right, exactly. So I just found that very interesting in law. And 
like I said, so you, you explore the gray areas of law all the time, but you can't base your laws on a minority report policing system where this is what could go wrong. It's just you can't do it. But th- but that's the whole point of a lot of traffic safety laws. Why you don't run a stop? I, why you don't run a stop sign? Because you could end up t-boning somebody. It, yeah, but and it, uh, but if it didn't happen, no harm, no foul. Right, and let's talk about. Let's even make a more compelling case so we don't straw man an argument. Okay, let's just say that, um, for example, seat belts. Right. Everybody, uh-huh. when they enacted seatbelt laws, it actually increased safety. So you could make the case that. Seatbelt laws actually were a good thing, right? So I'm not trying to straw man your arguments here, Artie. I'm I'm actually appreciating the conversation, the dialogue that we're having, but maybe we can pick this up. I can't stay on for too much longer. I got to get to bed uh, at some point, but okay, we um, could get lost down all these tangents, right? So well, I'm mean, not I trying get, to. Well, again, a lot, I think the reason why we're getting into this is because we're kind of getting into the weeds of you know your whole. Um, objection to your your ticket that you got that you feel that you okay, shouldn't you want... even have a license you shouldn't even need to have a license in the first place so what are we even doing here that's my well, understanding there's of multiple what your reasons. Is. yeah there's multiple reasons to me being frustrated uh by it number one being that covid was closed or covid had all the buildings closed right how the fuck was any so anybody supposed to renew their license at a closed building I thought I saw in Michigan there was an actually a section in the law that did per, that did actually extend the uh, renewal licensing. Yeah, right, 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 right. So, but what I'm saying is we were in we were in uncharted uh, territory. We were in you know uh, basically uh, a situation that nobody had been in. Right. So you would expect that people. So, but I took the year off and I started. In, uh, I started looking up laws and I started looking up psychology and I started like going back to studying. And then I was like, you know what? Uh, I think I've been living my life uh, basically paying for something that I shouldn't have to pay for, which is a fucking license. Okay, so right. I mean, well, I'm okay, that, well, well, here's, well, here's the here's the you know uh, the um the conclusion. That's fine. Okay. Um, you know, yeah. that's I I can that's a, that's an opinion that I can at least I can at least understand and you know in some ways yeah. respect. Um, uh, but the practical reality is, um, in Michigan you're required to have a license, and so if you're going to act on your beliefs, do not be surprised if you get hemmed up for it. Oh, I understand that. I understand there's real consequences. You have men and women in this world that they will, their belief is that I should have it and they're going to beat me over the head and might makes right. And they're going to lock me in a cage if I don't do what they say, right? Well, I mean, the state does, is supposed to have a monopoly on the application of force to enforce the laws duly enacted by the people, yes. And we all know that if you have to use force to do something, that basically should tell you logically it's not correct. I'm sorry, what? If you have to use violence and force to get compliance, we both know that fundamentally that is wrong. So uh, the wrongdoers so the are the people. Police cannot the use. So it's, it would be wrong for the police to use violence to apprehend a f- murderer fugitive. The murderer is out there causing loss, injury, or harm. So no, it, the the police should have the right. Oh, okay, to so do something so to so the, so violence is allowed or is justified. It's justified to in self defense and in self defense only. So, but again, we're getting in the but, but gray area. But, but they're trying to execute a warrant, right? Yeah, I mean, we could get lost down but, the infinity but, but, but of. See, the, see, you see the, the the issue that we're having here, Josh, is that you seem to want to pick and choose when the use of force applies by the state, and it seems well, to be it's, contingent it's upon, not me and, it's all, and it's all contingent upon your worldview. On no, how you it's believe not. It's... laws should be or what laws should be permitted or not permitted. So if I Okay, so if I die tomorrow, these arguments go away? No. Right. So these arguments will continue for all of eternity because law yeah, is complex. Because, because that's a political, dynamic. Because that's political philosophy for you. We've been Okay, so we've, uh, do, you mean, wanna, do you want to go we, down we, a, we've been, a, ar- we've been ar- well, you know, mankind has been having the the debate and argument on the nature of law and the relationship of law and government since Hammurabi's code. So it's it's never going to so, go away. But Right. So the, how come the, the, the how reality can... is is that you can't make those arguments in the middle of an arraignment and expect to get anywhere. <laughs> I will dis- I will agree to disagree there. But like I was saying, it it's like 
if you want to talk about the philosophy of law, I'd be happy to do that with you on a separate occasion. You know what I mean? Because this stuff, it really, it fascinates me. How come you and I can have a respectful discussion and it devolves into something childish when I'm on another show? Um, because humans are different and some of us there have differing uh, motivations for what we do. I don't okay, know. I, so can't speak for, I can't speak for the actions of others. I can only speak for myself. Okay, so, and if we have a difference in opinion, who's to say that you're right and I'm wrong? You might be right, right? How come it's so hard for some other people to admit that, that uh, when the shoe is on the other foot? Well, because the reason I, I make the case for myself is that many of these arguments that you've um, offered or put forth or, or have entertained or similar sounding arguments have been brought forth uh, before many jurisdictions, many courts of law, and have been rejected over and over and over again. And the reason why I fight, I, the, hold on. The reason why I push back on this is because many of these individuals who try to employ these uh, legal arguments did so by purchasing these filing scripts and and uh, uh, advice from people who profit off of these arguments that ultimately do not work for them and may put them in a worse situation than had they um, either taken a deal or fought it in a more traditional sense. Yeah, and uh, that's that's a fair statement, right? And I could be the idiot that gets himself and makes a situation way worse, right? But what happens if I prevail and they just uh, uh, don't dismiss the charges but discharge the charges? Because there is a difference between the word dismiss and discharge. If I can get the charges discharged, um, would do, all right, does that mean that uh, that's the way... Other people should do it. No, it just means that it worked at that one time, right? And hey, I could be an idiot and I could get myself locked in a cage because of this. But I know fundamentally the difference between right and wrong, Artie. I know the difference between right and wrong. I know I'm not doing anything wrong when I'm out on the road and I'm moving my fucking property, dude. I mean, like I know that. I mean, that's again, and I'm saying that's fine. I'm not. You, you're perfectly entitled to your your beliefs on what you think you're doing is right or wrong. I'm, I'm just saying. Do not be surprised if you get stopped again and get ticketed again for in in the future. Unless, well, all I know because, is that the, because the, unless the, you, chat, um, the, the chat would love that. I'm sure there's a lot of people in your chat right now that would love to see me get tased and they'd love to see violent things happen to me. Well, I'd rather uh, you not, you know, get, you know, severely injured. Um, but I would rather you understand, you know, the potential headaches you may incur uh, based on your beliefs which again you you yeah, may yeah. feel that you you know those are those are headaches that you're willing to incur i'm just saying what maybe yeah, yeah. may be in store for you so well and i accept all consequences i'm responsible for my own actions uh so you know that being said um i i'm gonna have to hop off here no uh already yep, but we can close up. yeah yeah i certainly appreciate the uh conversation i really really do and um, if I could just say in closing, you know, there are other attorneys that are practicing in the common law realm that are a lot more experienced than me. And I've always said it this way is that I'm the student. I'm not a teacher of anything. So I am licensed? a student. Of what? Uh, that's a good question. And I don't know. I do not know. One guy's name is Alphonse and you can check him oh, out God. if you want. Yeah, I know exactly who that, who that is. Alphonse. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, he, he operates out of Pennsylvania. Right, right. Yeah. yeah but he's showing... He, he shows people how to, He's you know, basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, you're going to probably have plenty of people that follow him that have had successes. Maybe some people have had failures, you know. But uh, his comment to me when I played the arraignment, my original arraignment, which I'd encourage you to go back and listen to the court dates that I've had before, uh, Artie, if you're so inclined. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I posted the arraignment on Alphonse's uh, Telegram uh, yeah. network, and his, respon his response was, well, this lady is a criminal judge, and she's trying to steal money from you, right? Okay. So which one is I, true? I, I, well, I'm sure, I'm sure they all say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, the, I you mean, see how... The, the, I mean, the, I, look, I've listened to Alphonse, and he has a serious, serious hate boner for attorneys, so of course he's <laughs> going to make arguments saying that they're all against you, the attorneys are out to get your money, the judge is about to get your money, Come to me and purchase my product, and I can work for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and so, and yeah, well, and I've appreciated this conversation just for the simple fact that, you know, I don't have any disdain for all attorneys. 
I don't have any disdain for all judges. I don't have disdain for all cops, right? But it's like, uh, what I'm trying to say, Artie, is you have people in these two opposite camps. Which one is true? Well, I would say a look on the um, results. Yeah, but, but, but we can both agree that both of them can't be true because they're on polar opposites, right? Yep. Okay, so the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. And so, you know, mm. who knows? That's, that's this crazy experiment that we call life. And I guess we will find out in the end kind of what happens, right? I suppose so. All right, I don't want to keep you any further than you need to, but I uh, again, yeah, I appreciate yeah, brother, uh, I, you coming in. Yeah, yeah, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. Everybody in chat for the trolls, hey, appreciate you uh, more than you know. I'll, you guys take care. Yep, take care. Bye. Okay. Well. Wow. Well, that was the thing, guys. Uh, yeah, let's get to the super chats. <clears throat> oh, there are a oh my god, there are a lot. All right. <sighs> Akira eight oh eight state. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Haya Arty for the four ninety nine super chat. Uh, Taco and Yoshi Gaming. Thank you for the five dollars. Hello, Artie. Uh, thank you for showing up at Yoshi Cam. Yoshi's on me asleep while we were watching you. Good sir. Happy Omar Taser Day. Thank you very much, Taco, and uh, glad to chop in. Uh, Law Talk with Mike. Thank you for the five dollars. Craptacular start. Uh, thank you very much, Law Talk. Uh, thank you very much, Mike. Uh, Doug Donahue, twenty dollars. Uh, for me dealing with this BS. Thank you very much, Doug, for your support. I appreciate it, man. Uh, Reverend Jason Reed, five dollars towards your bail after giving this guy legal advice. <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Reverend. Oh, excuse me, Margie um, Esteville, nine ninety nine. We don't consider oppositional attention hogs legal advice. Oppositional attention hogs legal advice. Thank you very much, Margie, for that. Uh, ben for uh, twenty dollars. Thank you very much, Ben. I don't know how you do this. Good luck, Artie. I. You know, I think we all know why how I'm able to do this. Uh, Aaron, five dollars. Uh, so he openly admitted to deliberately interfering with the court process. Benefit of the doubt is gone, and he needs a contempt charge. Thank you very much, Aaron, for the five dollars. Uh, Mickey the Bull, ten dollars. When you're a clown, everything looks like a circus. Right on. A Rosado 499 super chat shall is not optional. Uh, I I totally agree with you, and the uh, Michigan state statute agrees with you. Uh, interesting that he didn't know that. Uh, Bandon five dollars. Uh, next, please. Thank you very much, Bandon. Uh, Ziggy for the facts five dollars. If Dunning Kruger and a narcissist had a live child, he would sound like this. In all honestly, Ziggy, I've actually heard. This is pretty mild compared to other folks that I know. Like Sabir Bay is still is, in my opinion, um, the king uh, Dunning Kruger narcissist hybrid. Uh, hey, the adults are talking. Five dollars. Uh, just in case you can't hear my eye rolls, these are arguments I have with my nine year old when they're trying to get out of uh, cleaning or homework. Thank you very much. Uh, the call Galvin 499 have your brother come on for police perspective hashtag shall is not optional you know I've actually thought about it I think I think I want to do that uh so if you're uh so Nicole uh if you're listening to that uh let me know um and I'm actually totally down for it but you know how both of our schedules are kind of whacked so it'd be kind of tough to kind of organize it but I definitely would love to do it absolutely uh We'll definitely have it come on. Um, Reverend, uh, $5. I have a hard time resolving Josh's statement about always being honest with his performance in court. Uh, thank you very much, Reverend. 90s. Uh, nostalgia Nerd, $5. Uh, what if an individual is blind? Wouldn't he have the right to travel, operate an automobile if there's no regulation that... That is a logical conclusion. I mean, we kind of we kind of touched on that. That's why I kind of asked him, you know, um, 
you know, let, you know, assuming that, you know, we don't need licenses and that he feels that they're useless because or that they, you know, they don't cause any harm or injury or loss by by not having a license. Does that mean all traffic laws, you know, should be abolished that don't involve uh, an actual injury or loss? Um, so I kind of asked had to ask him about that. So and we heard his answer. P. Barnes, uh, five dollars Australian. I don't have any statistics, but they definitely agree with my conclusion. Thank you very much, P. Barnes. That's why I had to, I had to you know call him out on that. If if you're going to make a sweeping generalization or a a rash uh, accusation that judges are uh are directly profiting off of, because I think David Jose also made made this claim um regarding um ju family law judges and CPS. That they de directly profit off of certain rulings um, made in one way or any, uh, over another. <clears throat> uh, Ziggy for the facts. Uh, reporters on YouTube sounds as credible as quantum grammar. I, I agree. Dr. Joker, another $100. A red super chat from Dr. Joker. Thank you so much, man, for your generosity. Uh, you know, from Monday and today. Thank you, man. BSBT, stop trying to get Artie to say something that you can clip and use for your channel. Artie isn't your lawyer. Don't bring up his name up in court. Stop trying to discredit Artie just because you are salty about being wrong. Kiss and kick isn't on panel either. Stop getting trigger. I mean, that's why I, I wasn't a, the biggest fan uh, when he tried saying, oh, well, I consulted a lawyer and he said this and that. Uh, you know, I'm just thankful that he didn't like try to mention me by my name. He mentioned me by, by my YouTube name, but you know, uh, you know, trying to use uh, my words uh, to support your argument. I'm not the biggest fan about that, but it is what it is. Even if it's made in in, in jest, um, especially if it's another jurisdiction. Yeah. So William Foley, uh, five dollars walks like a duck. Talks like a duck. It's a duck. Thank you very much, uh, William. <clears throat> uh, hey, the adults are talking. Five dollars. Thank you very much. Uh, is this guy an independent millionaire who can cover all changes that licensed and insured drivers are covered for? Uh, for they hurt someone again. Uh, New Jersey's not a no-fault state, so I mean I can't. And I think uh, Mich uh, Michigan is in a minority in being a no-fault state. Um, so I can't really uh, chime in on, you know, the whether or not it's good policy uh, as to whether or not uh, uh, Michigan insurance structure is is just or correct. You know, I can't say anything about that. <clears throat> Dr. Joker, uh, five dollars. Stop talking to the chat. I assume that was to uh, BSPT. Uh, and again, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not kick. I'm not speaking for kick. Um, and I'm not going to impinge, uh, what's going on in kick's head, uh, in order to, uh, you know, try to get me say something that, uh, you know, I wouldn't normally say, uh, pronoun, uh, 1990. He is 100% a sovereign citizen. Uh, thank you. For, oh, excuse me. Uh, uh, thank you for being a member for six months. <clears throat> Aero Scout one ninety nine. By his definition, DUI is not illegal. Uh, I can drink at home. That's a, a fair point. You know, uh, public intoxication. <laughs> but you know, private intoxication. Whatever. Uh, Captain Cactus two pound super chat. Soft sit. Soft sit. Soft sit. Uh, Glenn Seria, two dollars. Just time for bed. Your mom is calling you. Sob sit. I don't think that's the real Josh, but it's okay. Uh, huh. Aaron, five dollars. Would it be reasonable to take this stream and report this guy to a judge for deliberating, frustrating to the court process? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that. Um, you know that. I mean, it's ultimately. I'm not going to involve myself in the proceedings of. Uh, you know, the court in an in issue that I'm not involved in and I'm not even licensed in um, how Michigan operates its courts is going to be how they operate it. 
um, even if I may, you know, have issues with uh, uh, the process itself. So, uh, Joshua Lee, thank you for being a member uh, for four months. Uh, thanks for the suffering through this so we don't have to. Uh, much appreciated, Joshua, for your uh, continued support. Tones overthinks it. $2, 13 minutes of absolute nonsense. Uh, quoting, uh, paraphrasing, I guess, BSBT. And uh, $15 from Joshua Lee. Thank you very much, Josh. To buy more beer. We all know you needed it after this one. Thank you very much, Josh. Uh, and then a four pounds, 49 pence. I don't know. Uh, from Potluck. Can you please once and for all confirm the meaning of poster seven regarding videoing? <laughs> uh, God, I, I, yeah, you know, I feel like we've, we've already been down that road way too many times. <clears throat> I mean, they should know it by now. Uh, auditor investigation, five dollars. Uh, don't know where you got the patience, except the beer that is. According to the docket, his next appearance is on one eleven. Good to know. And then Sonia, thank you for being a member for five months. Hi, Artie. Hello, Sonia. Ah, uh, man, thank you guys so much for the support. Um, it uh, it really does mean a lot. It really does help the channel. Um, uh, now I know guys or people are saying, you know, let's do a palate cleanser thing is, I don't, I don't, I, but I'm probably not going to do that. I'm going to let it in here to keep the, uh, to keep the video short, um, and, uh, not have it uh, mix up with everything. Um, one thing I do regret, um, and I know, I know BSB, we cut, we were almost getting there and I wanted to go a little bit further. Um, that BSBT kept on saying, well, during his hearing that he wanted to talk up, uh, he wanted to, uh, he talked about the judge about how he looked up definitions in Black's Law and Bouvier's, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I really, uh, and I, 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 you know, I already pointed out that, hey, you know, we already looked at Michigan's code, which, which is one that matters and not the, not the, uh, the various law dictionaries. Uh, but I also wanted to like have an excuse to open up uh, Cindy's gift for me, which is uh, Black's Law 11th edition. Um, I was really hoping that we could do that. We'll have to save it for next time because, you know, I was going to do, you know, OK, let's let's go. Let's go look up these definitions. All right. All right. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Hang on. Hang on. Let me see this. Oh, what? You know. I got my I got my I got my dictionary. Let's go look for it, you know. Land, 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 land. See snatch. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. That I. Okay. If you guys get that reference, you know I love you, and you get five points towards something. I don't know. All right, guys. Thank you. Have a good night. Uh, take care. And, uh, yeah, thanks for being with me. Um, I'm probably going to be on my gaming channel, you know, next couple of days, either tomorrow or over the weekend. But, uh, as always, appreciated. Have a good night, guys. Later. Yeah, I don't have my I don't have my ending scene uh, created just yet. It's still in the process. Later, guys. <clears throat> oh, uh, angst ball. Thank you for the ten dollars. Still all in all at your ability to not implode. Bravo, bravo. Now go hug a cat. Well, I'm going to do exactly that later. <laughs>